What's up everybody, this is Mr. Storm and today I'm going to show you one of my favorite things to do with image manipulation software. I am going to show you how to take a black and white photo like this and add color to it. This is an amazing, amazing technique. Um, this is something that you'd want to do in probably Photoshop, uh, some of the more advanced uh, photo editors out there, but Pixlr you can do it just fine. Um, uh, but this is really a study in how to use color properly, right? We have to basically invent the colors in this scene. So I have my black and white Santa. One thing about what uh, picking your picture for this project, you're going to want to pick a picture that gives you the, you know, that kind of opens you up for more creative color choices, right? So Santa, I picked this picture because this should be a colorful picture, but it's really black and white. It's desaturated. I can add some bright reds in here and get into the skin tone here in this boy's jacket. I can kind of determine what color I want the jacket to be. So that's something that you need to decide. Pick a picture where you're going to be able to add more than just one color to it um, and be really creative and, and have, have fun with this assignment. All right. So over here in our layer menu, we have one layer because we just opened up this this uh, picture. Um, I actually want to create a new layer and this is going to be the layer that I apply my first color to. So I'm going to hit new layer and I'm going to rename this layer to red. We'll just say it's red. Um, and with this layer I want to change its mode, right? Now with mode uh, normal um, I can pick a nice rustic red color for Santa's jacket, something that looks really nice. And if I start painting over, you notice I'm kind of like spray painting over the picture, and that's not what I want, right? I want to be able to blend the color in with the nice wrinkles and the deep shadows that are already there. So I'm going to change the mode, the layer mode, to overlay. And when I do that, when I paint over it, you can see that the color blends in with all the folds, right? Now, this is a uh, painstaking part of the process, but it's the part that I think I like the best, especially if you have a drawing tablet, um, which I normally use, but today I'm doing this with a mouse uh, just, uh, just for time purposes. But get in here and just paint in the color. It's kind of like, uh, you know, using a coloring book, right? And this is, I don't know, it's really relaxing to me. It's really fun to me. I like doing this kind of stuff. Um, this is something that when you get really good at it, you can actually do this for friends and family. If they have old black and white photos of their, you know, grandparents that they want to, uh, that they want to preserve or uh, add some color to and bring some life to the photograph, you can do that. Plus, artistically, you can take photos that are black and white, add color to just one part of the picture and make a really cool effect like that to really draw an emphasis on that one element of the picture if you want. Um, anyhow, so you just color in the color just like this and, you know, zoom in and out as you go. Notice I made a mistake over there. Hold on. Let me grab my hand tool. I made a mistake here. When you make a mistake, you can just go in with your eraser tool and you can kind of just trim it out. Um, uh, another thing too, is you want to play around with your brush settings. If your brush is too big or if it's too, um, small, you can change it here. I would recommend not going with a hard brush like this. Uh, you can, um, but your it's not going to blend very well. And if you kind of don't blend everything perfectly, then it's going to really be obvious. So I go with a feathered brush, one of these blurry brushes down here uh, that tends to work a little better with this project. Um, what else? What else? What else? All right. Let's say that I've colored in all of his jacket. I'm not going to color in everything. Um, and I want to color in his face over here. I want to talk a little bit about skin tones because skin tones are really difficult. Uh, first of all, what I need is I need another layer. So I have my red layer. Now you could do all this on one layer, but I highly recommend having separate layers for the different colors you're going to use. So I'm going to grab a new layer. I'm going to call this uh, skin. We'll call it Santa skin. Santa skin. All right. And then I'm going to change its mode to overlay as well. And then I'm going to grab a nice skin color for Santa. Um, I was playing around earlier and I found some skin colors that might be, that might work. Uh, one tip is you can kind of like put the color 
close to the picture and see. Maybe I want Santa to have a little bit more of a rosy disposition, rosy cheeks for Santa. You just kind of have to dial in the color with the skin. Uh, once you pick a color that you think might work, uh, grab your brush again and just paint on a little bit, right? And just kind of see how that works in the rest of the composition. Just paint in some, pretty rough, don't worry about uh, getting it perfect. And then back it out and kind of see how that looks against the rest. And it looks good, it's kind of bright. Maybe that color would look actually better for this kid here. So let me grab my brush again and yeah, that's a little better for the kid, actually. So that's the color I'm going to keep for the kid. Santa, again, I want him to have a little bit more uh, red in there. So I'm going to erase that real quick. And I'm actually going to change the name of this layer to Kid Skin. And then, you know, I would finish coloring in. Oh, I still have my erasure. Finish coloring this kid's skin in. I just colored over his eyeball right there. That's that's okay. I could fix that if I was really wanting to care about this right now, but I'm not. I'm just trying to go quick, show you guys the process. And that's even probably still too bright for him, but you guys get the idea. Now for Santa, I want to make it a little darker, and I want to make it a little redder. Maybe uh, rosy cheeks, right? We think about rosy cheeks Santa. I don't want him to be straight up pink, though but I want him to have like a hard, let's see, like an orange, not like a, not like a Donald Trump orange, but like a reddish orange. Maybe, let's see what that looks like. All right, let's go in there. Uh, maybe, that's not terrible. I could play around with that and make it a lot better looking. But anyway, you get the idea. So take a picture. It doesn't have to be as complex as this. Um, you know, you can try something simple at first just to get the concept down. But I want you to color in a black and white photo, uh, add in the colors. Now, I want you to show me that you're understanding the color theory. I want you to pick colors that'll look good together, that feel natural for the picture itself. Um, you know, have fun with this project because, again, this is something that I do as a de-stressor. Uh, it sounds weird, but I really, really like doing this just for fun on my own time. Um, and if you if you get a kick out of coloring books or, you know, the kind of tasks where you can just turn your brain off and just color for a little while, uh, I think you're really going to get a kick out of this. So give this a shot. Don't forget to create a new layer for each one. Don't forget to change the uh, layer mode to overlay. Um, another thing, you can start, you can play around with some of the other modes in here. Um, but overlay, I think, looks best for what we're going for for this project. But that's pretty much it. Uh, have fun with this project and, um, you know, give me your best work. Uh, practice, 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 and turn in your best version. Um, all right, I'm going to go finish coloring this one in because now I've gotten started and I don't want to stop. So I will see you guys later. Thanks for paying attention, and I'll see you next time.